Hi, welcome back to solving the heat equation. Today we are going to look at the MATLAB code for solving the simple heat equation. In this particular case, we are solving, just to remind you, we are solving this heat equation here. Let me mark it there. That's the heat equation we are trying to solve. This is the, this is the uh, conduction term. This is the heating, internal heating term. Boundary condition on the left, boundary condition on the right. Sorry, initial condition. Boundary condition on the left, boundary condition on the right is different because what we know is dt dx equal to 4. Okay? So, as usual, we had discretized, we had done all of this. So, we are going to go straight to the program. The way to write a, a MATLAB program is to write a script that is made up into pieces. And I will show you the different pieces of the script so that it is easy for you to follow. So, what I am going to do is I am going to show it to you in in PowerPoint so that I can show each slide corresponds to one task. So let us start the PowerPoint. Uh, let us see. Here it is. So, so our first task is to solve the heat equation problem. So what I do is I start out by writing out what is the problem I am going to solve. T, this comma t means differentiation with respect to t. So it says dt dt equal to 3 d squared t dx squared plus 4 times x plus 1 times t minus 30. So, that is the one that I am going to solve. That is the initial condition. All of this is commented so that I know what I am doing. Okay? So, this is the initial condition. At time t equal to 0, the temperature on the bar is 25 degrees. This one says on the left of the bar, the temperature increases, starts from 25 and increases gradually like 0.3 t. On the right side of the bar, the derivative of the temperature is 4. That is what these equations mean. So, this is what we want to solve. Here is the initial condition. Here are the two boundary conditions. So, this kind of thing is called an initial boundary value problem, IBVP. Okay? So, if you are able to solve this, our next task is to define the key variables. So, n equal to 10. So, I am taking the bar and dividing it into 10 pieces. I am taking time step, I am taking the time di direction and dividing it into 0 0.001, very small time steps. So, the increment in the space is total length of the bar which is 1 unit divided by n minus 1 which is the number of stations. So, it will tell us what is the increment in the bar. Lambda is uh, a convenient constant, you know dt. Uh, 3 times dt over dx squared, k over c, that is the conductivity over the heat capacity is given as 3 for this problem. That is one chunk. Okay. Next thing is, I am going to set the variables. This is the old time Tn and the, the, because n is 10, I am giving 10 to 1. T nu is again 10 to 1. In fact, I should have written it as n to 1 so that it is easy for us to see. Now, the next thing is, we got, we got to set up the initial time, the starting time, that is the total amount of time that we are going to spend for simulation. I am plotting, so this is the figure I am going to plot, it is called figure 1 and it is and initially I am plotting t old just to see what will happen. Let us see, yeah we did all of that, very good, very good, very good. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, we have to initialize, the. this is the initial value. I have written it as a loop. Okay. Now, this is my loop starting. So, I am saying while t less than t max, first thing I am going to do is I am going to update the figure. So, look at how I am updating it. I am not redrawing a new figure. I am going to set the y data, the y component, the y, the, the function to t old. And then I am going to say draw it now. So, what it will do is it will animate, it will not change the graph. Every time it goes through the while loop, it will draw a new graph. And so, you will see that it will animate this thing. Next, I am going to do a forward time stepping t equal to t plus dt. So, that is one piece. Then for i equal to 2 to n minus 1, this is the interior pieces. t new equals t old plus lambda times, this is the this is the central difference scheme for the second derivative. This is the heating term 4 times dt times xi plus 1 times all this stuff and xi is the location of the ith node. That is the other chunk. This is where we are doing the old variables. This is the end boundary conditions. 
So, this is the end where I have uh, what is that uh, the heat transfer boundary condition and then I am going to update it and that is the end of it. So, it is a fairly simple straightforward deal. I, I, I do the boundary conditions, I update the equations and I am off and running. Okay, so then we are done. That is all we need to do. So, let us see if our MATLAB program actually works. So, I am going to go to MATLAB. Here is all this command, right? Here is the heat equation problem, here is the initialization, here is the key variables, here is the uh, here is the initial condition, here is the figure setting and all that. Here is where I do this is the left boundary condition. This is the interior, that is the right boundary condition. So, this is the left, that is the interior, that is the right boundary condition. Okay? And then I do this for time and again and again. This particular scheme is a simple forward Euler scheme for this problem. And let us see what I will get. Yeah, I will add it to path. There, can you see how the temperature kind of gradually goes up in this side, drops. And then you will see a very peculiar feature, the temperature rises again. That is because of the heating and the boundary condition. It is a fairly complex thing, so but that is what is happening. So, I hope you got the idea and you can see how I got the animation. The animation is obtained of this curve is obtained by a very simple command. I first plot the figure, I set the axis and then I reset the y data that is the function. Every time I reset the function, it will draw a new, it will erase the old curve and draw a new curve. That is how it works. Okay. With that, we are done.